Hi, I'm Maisie Peters, and these are five tracks that inspired me. So the first song I've chosen for songs that inspired me is The Winner Takes It All by ABBA, which I would feel pretty confident in saying is maybe the best song ever written. And I've listened to it a lot recently, but I actually, I it's the first on my list because it's the song I found the earliest. I think I must have been seven or eight, and I heard ABBA and I was obsessed with them, and I used to listen to it with my sister in the car all the time. We'd listen to ABBA Gold. And I think that as a child, it's so instant, it's so infectious, it's so joyous. There's so much emotion in ABBA, and it's simultaneously so complicated and so simple. And then as an adult, rediscovering the winner takes it all, it's just, there's just thousands of feelings in that song, and yet it's only three and a half minutes long. Simultaneously, it's so euphoric and it's so sad. It's maybe the saddest song ever, but these drums come in in the second verse, and it feels like you're flying, but also it's so awful and it's so sad. Um, and there's so many lyrics. I could talk about the, the lyrics in The Winner Takes It All all night, but she goes, I, you know, I don't want to talk if it makes you feel bad. And I just think that's so beautiful. I think the whole song is so beautiful, but it simultaneously feels like a party and I don't know how they did it. So the winner takes it all, number one. Number two is Dear John by Taylor Swift. Uh, Taylor Swift is my biggest musical influence. And I remember hearing Dear John when I was a little bit older than when I heard ABBA and it's this, it's like an epic, it's an epic story. And it's so, there's so much of her that she put into that song and I think it's so brave and it's a wonderful example of songwriting at its absolute finest. She, she left nothing out, she put it all on the table and you can hear, you can hear how much of her is in that song and I think it's really remarkable and really inspiring. So, and now I've actually started putting Dear John into my set list that I play, all the shows I play right now. So Dear John comes at the end of a mashup I do of all of my songs. And so it feels like a really full circle moment to have that there um, as like a sort of cornerstone of my musical uh, education. I think it's just, again, it's, it reminds me of the other two songs and they're all very different, but it is, it's just this, epic story and I remember hearing it when I was like an early teenager and just being like what is this and and I you I would just listen on repeat and I think that it's there's so much drama in it and I love the the ebb and the flow to it and I think that yeah it's like the way that it it captured so many people as well like you know everyone can sing when I was a young boy my father took me into the city to play a marching band um and I, yeah, I love, it really, it also just really defines a certain period of my life where I was really into that type of music and I think was actually really great for my education. I think like that emo punk pop scene will have some of the best lyrics. So then you have number four, which is The Blower's Daughter by Damien Rice. And I remember hearing that when I was doing this tiny little tour. I mean, you can't even really call it a tour. It was just me and a keys player and we were going around the UK and playing in like pubs to seven people. And uh, the person who was the tour managing me at the time uh, played me and was like, have you heard Damien Rice? And I said, I think so. And he said, you should listen to Oh. So I, we listened to it in the car. And maybe I'd never properly listened to it because I remember hearing The Blower's Daughter and being like, this is just the best thing I've ever heard. And it really reminds me of like really, really early on in my career and, and my songwriting and my making music and hearing The Blower's Daughter and and just thinking there was like such ma magic in that and that song is so raw and there's really nothing in it. And I think that song teaches you all of the, all of the glory of that, of sometimes the absolute best is the absolute least. Number five is a song called uh, Between Me and You by Brandon Flowers, which is my favorite song. And I have to have an answer for this because you get asked it all the time. So I've now got my answer and my answer is Between Me and You. So it's, uh, it's a song from his solo record. And I just 
And I describe it to people when people ask, and they say, why is it your favorite song? And I go, I just love every single part of the song. I love every chord, I love every note, I love every lyric, I love every ad lib, I can sing you all the ad libs. At one point, Brandis Flower goes like, um, child, he goes like, oh, child, in one of the verses, and I think it's genius. Um, and I love, and I the lyric, I think I, I really take, like it, it means more to me with every year. And the chorus starts with, there's a power in letting go, which I just think is a, a wonderful first line for a chorus. And I, and I love these hours I'm working ain't, the hours I'm working ain't nearly enough. And sometimes it's like a bullet came and blasted me right out of the blue. Uh, and I think, yeah, I just love every single component to this song. And it is my favorite song. And therefore, it's on my it's on my list, it's number five. And I think I listen to it every single time I take off in an airplane, and I try and do it every single time I land.